Hi, good afternoon. It's a beautiful day, a beautiful Saturday here in Virginia Beach. And I'm so glad we could come together again today to begin with preparation for our prayer groups, our prayer laboratories, as Glenn Clark called them. In the windows of heaven, Dr. Clark tells us, the highest art of living consists of making prayer such a natural and continual expression toward God that it works itself into the muscles and the mind process. Then every act of our daily lives reflects the love and the joy of Christ's presence. So once again, as we begin, let's just take a minute or two to relax, to take some deep breaths, Four seconds in, four seconds out. Slow, deep, mindful breaths. Let us open the channel, release all tension, and then know that we're surrounded by the loving arms of our loving God. Just take a moment to concentrate, relax. Stretch if you need. So let's open with a prayer. Let us bow our heads and ask for God's guidance. Come Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful and kindle in them the fire of your love. Send forth your spirit and they shall be created and you shall renew the face of our earth. O God, who by the light of the Holy Spirit did instruct the hearts of the faithful. Grant that by that same Holy Spirit we may be truly wise and ever enjoy his consolations through Christ our Lord. Amen. So today we're going to start with a reflection on the prayer our Father taught us, the one that we learned as children, the prayer of praising God and seeking his guidance. The Our Father. This reflection came from Ram Ramblings of a Zealot, which I found on WordPress. And that was interesting and is another way to um, look at how we say the Our Father and what the Zealot that wrote this sees how it's written. So we know that Jesus was praying in a certain place and when he finished, one of the disciples said to him, Master, teach us to pray, as John taught his disciples. And then he said to them, When you pray, and he proceeded with the Our Father. So when we pray, to pray like Jesus, we begin. First we praise God. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. In the prayer that Jesus taught us, he begins by praising God. What a great way to begin. Then he talks about seeking God's will. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. This is so familiar to us and it's part of our prayer that we say, the nine o'clock prayer. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. We're seeking God's will. Do we know what God's purpose is for our life? Whether you answer yes or no, we should still continually seek to find God's plan for our lives. Then we talk about seeking God's favor. Give us this day our daily bread. What are we in need of? Strength, healing, deliverance, abundance. God has all those things, and he's just waiting for us to ask him for them. Then seek and give. Important also to give forgiveness. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. To have our prayers heard and answered, we are to profess and seek forgiveness for our sins, but also to forgive others who have hurt us. 
God knows how you've been hurt. So let it go. Let it go. Give forgiveness and let God handle it. Then we seek his protection. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Whatever is your weakness, ask God's protection from it. And then acknowledge God, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory. We let God know that we know that he is in complete control. And finally, we thank God. In every recorded prayer that Jesus spoke, he gave thanks to God. As Jesus thought it was so important to thank God, shouldn't we also forever thank him for our many blessings? Thank him for the gifts. Mother Teresa said, the best way to show gratitude is to accept everything, even my problems with joy. Not always easy, but something to remember. So on Thursday, we spoke about trust. Trusting God and knowing that God gives us time to change and that we need to have patience and be tolerant as we move forward. Yesterday, strength and hope were our themes. And today, we'll focus on kindness and gratitude. It seems to me that in today's times, there's so much negativity, and so many people dwell on finding fault. They find it easy to criticize and to judge. They spew angry and judgmental words. But how does that anger and negativity affect us? I don't know about you, but to me, that toxicity is just something that I try to avoid. I try to stay away from it because it does affect me. It's my belief that forgiveness and kindness are important and they're vital to my own joy and happiness. Again, I go back to Mother Teresa and some of her words that have seen me through many challenges in my life. They help me focus, refocus on the joys of my life and finding the good in all things. It's so easy to be led astray at times by the negativity and the things we hear so often. But Mother Teresa said, people are often unreasonable, illogical, and self-centered. Forgive them anyway. If you are kind, people may accuse you of selfish ulterior motives, but be kind anyway. If you're successful, you will win some false friends, and actually even some true enemies, but succeed anyway. If you're honest and frank, people may cheat you, but be honest and frank anyway. What you spent years building, someone could destroy overnight. Build anyway. If you find sincerity and happiness, they may be jealous. Be happy anyway. The good you do today, people will often forget tomorrow. But do good anyway. Give the world the best you have, and it may never be enough. But give the world the best you have anyway. You see, in the final analysis, it's between you and God. It was never between you and them anyway. I believe if we continually practice kindness and love, it will change our hearts and remind us constantly of God's gifts and of all our gratitude to Him. So what is gratitude? What is gratitude? And how does it affect us? So again, the definition of gratitude, the quality of being thankful, readiness to show appreciation and to return kindness. I love the return kindness part. In positive psychology research, gratitude is strongly and consistently associated with greater happiness. 
Gratitude helps people feel more positive emotions, relish good experiences, improve their health, deal with adversity, which we sure need that right now, and build strong relationships. People feel and express gratitude in multiple ways. In these times of uncertainty, what are some ways we can show gratitude? Sometimes the very simplest of things saying a kind word, the quickest, simplest, and easiest way to demonstrate gratitude is just to say thank you to another. Just say thank you. But to include others. One of the things I love is to listen intently. Sometimes we're so busy talking and going on, we don't listen. We show gratitude just by listening to someone and what they have to say. Maybe a visit, bringing over lunch. Some of those things. Some of those may be difficult right now with all the COVID stuff going on that we can't do. But a quick email to say hello, a card, a call, asking what you can do to help someone. I have found for me, I've reconnected with people I went to nursing school with many years ago. We have a little Zoom call once a month to connect. We hadn't done that. So a benefit, a blessing, a joy that has come from all of this stay-at-home stuff. There are many ways to do it. Reach out. Touch people. Be grateful to them because it'll pay you. Your benefit will be enormous. So I think you can probably think of many, many other things you can do. And just remember, little things mean a lot. Gratitude goes a long, long way. Sometimes those gestures of gratitude can change somebody's outlook, can brighten their day. I'll tell you a quick story. Um, the other day, most of you, know, a lot of y'all know my husband, Jim. He was at a local grocery store buying 50 loaves of bread for our pantry at church. And there was a lady um, checking out at the same time, and she said, Oh, go ahead, you can go. And he kind of jokingly said, Well, yeah, I'm not eating all of this. This is, I'm buying it for our church pantry. And she just smiled and said, Fine. And so he finished paying for the bread. And she said, Oh, I wanted to pay for that. And he said, Oh, I've already taken care of it. Thank you, though. And, <clears throat> excuse me. And she reached and handed him a $100 bill, a nice, crisp $100 bill, and said, Here, give this to your church pantry. What kindness, what, it made him feel good. Well, he came home and told me it just lightened my day. I called our minister um, at church and the, who's in charge of the pantry and told him, you know, it was like we, we used it to spread when we had our pantry, when we gave out all the food the other day. We talked about it and how that simple act filled so many people with joy that somebody would reach out and do that. We've all heard about the person who is in line at Chick-fil-A and they pay for the people behind them. You know, the old pass it on. So remember, there are many ways that we can show gratitude. And God sees those. And He loves when we're grateful to Him, but also to our fellow human beings. While we're talking about that, let us also remember that when we express gratitude, that's wonderful. But remember that accepting gratitude from others is also important for our own well-being. You know, so often we say, oh, no, that was nothing. Yeah, you're welcome. But when somebody says thank you, accept it. Hold it. Love it. It will help your well-being. We find countless biblical references to gratitude and thankfulness. Psalm 100, verses 4 and 5. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. Psalm 71, verse 13 says, then we, your people, the sheep of your pasture, will praise you forever. From generation to generation, we will proclaim your praise. 
Psalm 86, verse 12. I will praise you, Lord my God, with all my heart. I will glorify your name forever. As we continue to grow and pray, may we always be grateful for the gifts our Father has given to each of us. Though our gifts may be different, how we use our gifts to show love and kindness to all humanity, and how we express our gratitude to Him, our Heavenly Father, who is the giver of all gifts, will strengthen and enrich our lives. Glenn Clark speaks of gratitude and the soul's sincere desire. He says, Gratitude sums up, includes, and expresses every attribute of essential prayer. Perfect gratitude is perfect prayer. And to keep oneself in a condition of eternal gratitude is to keep oneself in a condition of eternal prayer. Then one knows what it means to pray without ceasing. O Lord, open thou my lips, and my mouth shall show forth thy praise. Perfect prayer also requires a fusing of all the various elements into one simple direct communication. This makes it necessary that we summarize the factors. And as he says, where there is God, there is love. Where there is love, there is joy. Where there is joy, there is power. Where there is power, God is glorified. Where God is glorified, there is love. Again, that's from the soul's sincere desire. So in closing today, my prayer for each and every one of us comes from Romans 15, 13. Very simply, now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that you will abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, and I hope that each of you will go to your prayer group today and reflect on gratitude. Reflect on all the love, the joy, the faithfulness of our God. And reach out even virtually to send love and hugs and good wishes to everyone. Sending you love, light, and blessings. Thank you. Again, I ask you just to take a few minutes to reflect and then join your prayer groups, knowing that you are loved just as the shepherd loved and cared for his lambs. Amen.